Since the dawn of time, humans have populated the Earth with tiny replicas of themselves. Children. Children who bounce about their daily activities are remarkably smaller than fully grown adults and are therefore harder to be seen from moving vehicles. Children are prone to mix fantasy with reality. Their lack of ability to sense speed and distance, combined with one-third less vision than adult humans, and an inclination to listen to only things they like, make them unsuspecting prey for swift cars and commuting drivers. Children are often found at schools, where they learn right from wrong. But on their way to schools, they often pass through intersections. And every intersection has one thing in common. Crosswalks. There are two types of crosswalks found in the wild. Marked crosswalks with painted lines and unmarked crosswalks without any painted lines. Now, pedestrians of all types, including children, have what's called the right of way at crosswalks. This means when a pedestrian enters a crosswalk, vehicles must stop and stay stopped until the pedestrian has finished crossing. In all other sections of roadway, cars have the right of way. The following series is an intimate examination of intersections and those who cross them. Ah, the crossing guard, Utah's prompt, friendly, and professional protector of pedestrians. Let's take a look at the equipment and conduct of two crossing guards going about their essential tasks. This bright-eyed biped is a proper example of the crossing guard species. She goes about her business, reviewing the conditions at her post as she begins her duty. Her highly visible reflective vest is worn above all other layers of plumage. Oh dear, this crossing guard is off to a poor start. He's lost his paddle and replaced it with a branch. Crossing guards are responsible and accountable for all equipment provided to them. She correctly positions bright cones to guide children across the street. Dear me, this move definitely isn't in the crossing guard quick reference guide. She remains alert at her post, always expecting the unexpected. Now he's using the branch to direct traffic, and he hasn't been trained to direct traffic. Officers go through extensive training to direct traffic, and without proper training, this branch waver is putting himself and others in danger. It's a crossing guard's duty to alert and stop traffic for crosswalk users, but it's never his job to direct traffic. Her stop sign paddle is raised high and her hands are free to signal vehicles and rescue children from danger. Her positive image credibly represents her community as well as law enforcement. Brilliant. Now he's eating a breakfast burrito. It also appears he's listening to a self-improvement podcast. His impromptu tool has broken. He's replaced the branch with an umbrella, which, even during rain and sleet, should never be used by crossing guards because umbrellas can block the view of drivers, children and crossing guards alike. Our burrito-fisted blunderer is now confronting a motorist. This is something that should never be done, even when the law is being broken. Motorists who frequently break the law should be reported to a supervisor, but this fellow is attempting to take the law into his own hands. As we understand more about the complexity of the tasks of crossing guards, so we begin to appreciate the responsibility of their roles.
deep in the suburbs of Salt Lake City lies an elementary school, surrounded by various intersections. Here, a veteran crossing guard has arrived early to set up her crosswalk for neighborhood children. A proper setup is what sets apart a mediocre guard from a truly great one. She's arrived in plenty of time to prepare the surroundings before crossing begins. In accordance with Utah laws, her car has been parked at least 20 feet from all crosswalks and at least 30 feet from all stop signs. She doesn't want to block motorists' view of the crossing area. She started her setup by turning on the Reduce Speed School Zone sign and has locked it to prevent tampering. Next, she clears the area of hazards and debris that could impede student crossing. Now, she's setting up visual markers to help with timing her entrance into the crosswalk. If a car is between her and her marker, she knows it will not have enough time to stop if she steps into the road. She knows drivers will take at minimum two seconds to perceive and react to her paddle. Now that she's turned on the flashing school zone lights, it's time to set out the safety cones. She holds her paddle high, placing the bright markers at the center of the crosswalk. Although every crosswalk has its own optimal placement for cones, she's aware of exactly where they must be set to guide the small herds of children without impeding traffic. Her preparation of the crosswalk is now complete and crossing can begin. Our misshapen rookie crossing guard is now in the middle of a peak crossing period. He's crossing children one at a time in a most inefficient manner, and drivers are getting impatient. Here comes a biker at full speed. Instead of instructing the biker to dismount and walk, our bumbling crossing guard waves impatiently, putting the child in danger. Our veteran crossing guard takes a much different approach. She stands at least one step from the edge of the road and gathers the children into groups before crossing. She asks them to walk instead of ride, and she reminds them to wear their helmets. Calculating the precise moment to begin a crossing is both an art and a science. The use of a visual marker aids crossing guards in determining when there's enough time to get the attention of a driver while giving them enough time to stop. Wet and icy weather, of course, require longer stopping distances. At signalized crossing, a signal is activated. The crossing guard waits for a walk sign to appear and scans traffic before crossing a flock of youngsters. After finding the perfect gap in traffic, this veteran crossing guard raises her paddle before her to show her intentions to traffic before entering the crosswalk. She sets an example to the younglings by looking left, right and then left again. The rookie crossing guard allows children to follow him into the street before he has determined that crossing is safe. The veteran crossing guard holds her paddle at shoulder height, making sure it is visible to all lanes as she stops the far side traffic. The crossing guard chooses a spot that's just outside of the crosswalk, near the center of the roadway. It is the optimal position for this particular intersection. She then faces the crosswalk and the children. With her stop pedal held high, the crossing guard makes eye contact and tells the gaggle of miniature pedestrians that it's okay to cross. On the other hand, this fellow's wild gestures are confusing drivers. A crossing guard's role is to direct pedestrians, not traffic. Oh dear, another blunder. Touching the children is never allowed, not even to fix a backpack zipper. The only exception for contact with a child is to snatch them out of harm's way. Our veteran crossing guard holds her ground at the center of the crosswalk 
until every child has reached the opposite curb. No traffic will dare enter the intersection on her watch. As more children arrive ready to cross, she instructs them to wait until the next gap in traffic. At this signalized crossing, the light will change before the children have safely finished crossing. But Utah law states that traffic must stop and remain stopped until all pedestrians, including the crossing guard, have finished crossing, even if the signal has changed. Our seasoned crossing guard has successfully crossed all children to the far side of the street. She heads back to the curb with her stop paddle still held high. More children have approached and want to cross, but they must wait until the guard returns and for the next gap in traffic. Dropping the paddle on his return walk sends a confusing signal to drivers and puts this guard in the path of danger. Crossing guards. Twice a day, they prepare their posts, set visual cues, and accurately position themselves. When they cross pedestrians, they follow eight steps. One, assemble the children. Two, choose a gap in traffic. Three, stop near side traffic and enter the crosswalk. Four, stop far side traffic. Five, take position. Six, start the crossing. Seven, maintain position. And eight, return to the curb. Crossing guards play an important role in the safety of our children making their way to and from school. Next time on The Living Pavement, Asphalt, a world richer than we ever thought possible where creatures thrive in the most extreme conditions in Utah.